When I initially bought all of these weekly paying dividend ETFs, I did not think that they would do well. I'll be honest. I thought that they would probably trade sideways. We'd see some nav erosion. The dividends would shrink. But I've been pretty shocked so far. We are officially one month in. This is the fourth update to this um, challenge, I guess, that I'm doing. In reality, I'm just seeing how these things perform. Um, but I appreciate you guys for being back. And if you're new to the channel, I bought every single weekly paying dividend ETF as close as I could get to $100. And I'm tracking their progress um, on Moomoo. If you want to check out Moomoo for yourself, it's been really good so far. I'm really happy with how it's performed once I worked the kinks out. Um, but check the description down below for a link. If you put in 100 bucks, you get some discounts and stuff like that and some rewards, 15 stocks for free. They're small stocks. But still, if you guys are interested, I'll link that down below. And it helps support me. Now, checking in, uh, the account has been really, really interesting this week. I try not to check it every single day, but it's hard not to. And we did receive dividends from all eight of the funds. So we're going to go over that. We're going to start by going over the price appreciation and depreciation of the account and the individual securities, all the ETFs in the account. And then we'll move over to our spreadsheet where we track the dividends and calculate how well things are going for the account, basically. So... The, I'm just going to start with the accounts. Uh, current value is $820.16. We are down on our position technically, but I'll, I'll explain more of that when we go into the next section um, in the account. So I appreciate you guys for being here. If you are new or if you're, you've are you seen a couple of videos, I do a lot of stock content, dividends, ETFs, stuff like that. I'm a dividend investor myself, but I love all kinds of investing. And so I make videos on it. So if you're interested in joining the community, um, hit subscribe and like the video to let me know that you enjoy this. I'm going to keep putting out these videos every single week because you guys seem to enjoy them and I enjoy making them. So I appreciate you guys for all the help. We hit over 3,000 subscribers, which I am amazed at. It's insane to me. And I really, really just appreciate you guys um, for being here and for, I'm glad you guys enjoy the content. So let me know in the comments what you think about this video. If you want to see things differently, I'm always willing to mix things up to do whatever you guys want. So that being said, let's roll the intro. <laughs> So starting off, yes, we're at 8.20 and 16 cents. And I know what that sounds like, oh, but you're down PL wise. Yes, because currently we are not doing anything with the dividends. Now I've I've narrowed it down. There's like three different things I'm interested in doing based off your guys' comments. Um, one is reinvesting all of them back into the underlying fund. The only reason I don't want to do this is because a lot of comments have said this is not what these funds are for. They're for immediate cash flow and income. They're not for reinvestment, which I also, I do in a way agree with because of the Navarrosian fear. Um, so I'm not sure. Second, I want to put it all into a separate fund. I want to move all of it into an, uh, a ninth ETF, whether it be SCHD or something that yields a bit more, Devo, something like that. That's a really common one. Even SPY, just see how much I can build up in SPY from holding these for a year to two years um, and fighting the NAV erosion if there is some. So uh, that's my second option. And third, I can just move it to like a high yield savings account. So let me know between those three what you guys want. And if you choose number two, let me know what ETF or stock you want me to put it in because that would help me out a ton. There's been a bunch. A lot of people said reinvest. A lot of people said put it into SCHD. So I'm going to count all the comments on this video and that will be the final option. So if you want to see it one way or another, let me know in the comments. Um, a couple other things to address from the comments on the last video, which you guys blew that video up. So I really do appreciate that. Um, people, I, I was accused by one person of saying that I've, I'm putting more money into the account and cause they were saying, no, all these weekly ETFs are a scam. And you know, I have not added more money to the account and I can actually prove that. So what I'm going to do, I'm pull up notifications here and we're going to go to order status. So what we're going to see is I'm not buying anything else in the fund. Um, so we can go all the way. This goes all the way back to October two when I initially purchased it. And, um, I'm not including any more money because we're going to add up all the dividends that I've been paid out so far at the end of the video. And you'll see my available funds is not going up. So you guys know, um, if you watch a couple of these series, you'll know that I'm not putting more money in. Uh, it's okay to be inquisitive about that and to question me on it. I'm happy to show everything. Um, my number of shares has not gone up. I'm not increasing the value. And like I said, I can't put in fractional shares. My average cost has not changed at all, which it would. So if you're really, if you believe that I'm faking this or anything like that, you can do all that research and check it. I'm not going to do it for you because it's kind of boring. Uh, but there it is. That's all. That's the proof that I have. You can, you can fact check it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go individually into each of these, the charts and see how these things are performing. Cause some of them are up, some are down really bad. The market's been all over the place. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So starting off with IWMY, probably the riskiest fund in the account, I would say. I, I used to think the yield max funds were, but I, I actually believe that the Defiance ones just don't have the history to them um, and a different strategy too for their options. So it's down 3.06%. Total PL is uh, $3.18 in the negative. So we're down $3. It's not terrible, but still, I don't like seeing that kind of loss. And this is downtrending. It really has been beaten up from the split that happened in July. It was $41 at its peak and it has continued. It drops every dividend, trails back up halfway, drops, trails, drops, trails. And so the last dividend, um, they paid the 10th, the 17th, the 24th. And so this dividend that I'm putting in, it, the day I, it meets my account, it goes into my account as a few days lagging. So it's going to say it differently on the spreadsheet. I'm tracking when I get the dividend, not when it's paid. Um, and so they've been paying consistently though. I'm, I'm happy to see it. This one, the defiance funds were the ones that weren't paying at the beginning. So I'm glad to see them consistently paying. We can see a 42 cent dividend and then a 34 and a half cent dividend. And now a 31 cent dividend, a little less than that. So continuing to downtrend. So IWMY is looking like nav erosion is going to be controlling this one. Um, at least from our first month, you never know what happens, but I think what did happen is once these things switched to weekly and everyone all, was all hyped about it, it started to grow a little bit. Uh, the AUM is at 130 and the dividend yield it says right now is $107. It's even higher than last time. So the yield continues to go up and the price continues to go down, which is how it goes. Um, so I'm not too pumped about this one. This is the worst performer that we've seen so far. And it's kind of been the worst performer over the last couple of weeks. So you know, I bought all of them. So we're going to find, well, there's going to be a worse one when you own all of them. Checking out QQQY next, the next defiance fund. This one's only down 0.35, uh, 0.34%, 0.35 cents, which I'm pumped about. It's been paying out dividends. And so jumping into this chart, we can see something similar. Although the last couple of weeks, what, what day was this? September 30, it's been trading relatively sideways. The dividend did pay out, um, which we can look at. So since it started paying weekly, another 34.5 cent dividend, a 26, 27.6 and 27.4. So I, because this was trading kind of flat, I was expecting the dividend to be less because I thought maybe if they had a really low dividend, it didn't pull that much from the AUM and they were able to, you know, just not pay much in a dividend. The price didn't go anywhere, but it didn't. So the price has continued to trade sideways. Our dividend jumped up a little bit and I'm happy about that. AUM of 200 million and a dividend yield of 90%. The yield is creeping up on this one as well. And the nav erosion is something I'll be watching closely. But again, the whole point of this is to track how these do. And so watching the price decline doesn't mean it's a bad investment necessarily. All it means is you need to be making more in dividends than you're losing by enough of a margin where you can take on the risk and the taxes and such because it is a big factor. I hope that makes sense. I've talked about it so many times on this. I'm not going to dive into the details too much. Let's go to WDTE, which we can see is down half a percent, 0.54% down and total PL. We've lost 46 cents. Our investment initially of 84 something and same kind of thing as uh, QQQY. It has kind of traded sideways. We did see some, some dividends, um, 33 cents, and, and then we had 25 cents and 25 cents again. So even though the dividends haven't dropped significantly or increased significantly, we're trading sideways. We have a lower AUM of 91, the lowest that I've seen, and a lower dividend yield of 56.7%, which is staying a little more consistent. Now, I like a lower yield. I mean, 56, 57% is not low, but lower compared to the other two. So I'm not upset by that at all. What we'll do now, we'll jump into the YMAX funds and see our returns from those crazy weekly dividend paying ETFs. I'm going to start off with YMAX. I recently put a video out, $10,000 invested into YMAX gets you how much in dividends and people seem to like it. I think this fund has a lot more potential and it's really, really changed since going weekly. And that's kind of the whole point of that last video. It is different. So go check that out if you're interested in YMAX. The current dividend, I think is like 60% or something like that. We're up. 50 cents. We are up half a percent, 0.57 percent actually. And so I'm happy with YMAX. This was not my favorite. I've said over and over YMAX is my favorite, but we've seen some pretty consistent dividends from this guy. Although it is beaten down from all time highs, it is starting to trade a little bit more sideways. We can see a 22 cent, almost 23 cent dividend, 22 cent dividend, 21 cent, 20 cent, 17.5, a really low dividend. And our last one was 22.7. So we're back to, I think that's our highest dividend um, or close to the highest 
so far. So I'm really ecstatic about that. And it's still traded sideways. We didn't see a crazy drop. A lot more assets under management for these guys, 330.5 million and a dividend yield of 36%. Now I did calculate it in the other video. I'll just explain it here. What I did was I took all of the weekly dividends that we've had so far. I divided them to get an average and I multiplied that by 52, which is the amount of weeks we have in a year. It's actually a little bit over 52, but I didn't factor that in. And then I divided that by the current price, which was $17 and something cents. And it came out with a yield of like 63%. So if you want to know how I did that or watch that, check out the other video. I'll link it down below and at the end. But I was really surprised because since it switched to weekly, it's been performing significantly better. And I don't know if that's just more influx of money coming in, if people are consistently buying this one, which it looks like it has been. I mean, we can see the volume down here, but there were some crazy days of volume prior to that as well. So... I'm happy with WiMAX and let's jump to WiMAX, which is my absolute favorite. Although WiMAX might be my favorite now. Um, WiMAG is up. We're up a dollar point one one and which is a dollar uh, 1.15 percent increase, which I'm happy to see. And we've seen a little bit more ups and downs with WiMAG than I expected. The market has been going all over the place. So although I wasn't expecting this one to be super volatile, it seems like it is playing more with the fluctuations of the market, which the Magnificent 7 would make sense. We can see initial dividends of just under 20 cents, 17 cents, 16 and a half. The huge one was 28 cents and then 20 and a half, 22 and a half. And then our last one was only five cents, five and a half. Now, someone commented on the last video they, that you're able to predict these based off of how much they're going to pay out and, and whatnot. So they had it calculated this dividend being a lot lower because they had that huge, they had a, a huge couple of dividends. And so I'm not disappointed. Um, it seems like they're trying to keep it close to the initial, like before they were paying weekly, they were paying 60 cents. So if you have 16 and 30 and 22 and five, you're still above that. So you can kind of predict it. So this dividend was significantly lower, but I think it's something that they actively do, not necessarily just a really poor week with the options and implied volatility and whatnot. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know about that. That was someone that commented, which I appreciate you guys for commenting and letting me know that stuff. But still, fact check me, I wanna know myself. Um, and I, I appreciate that. So we can see AUM uh, 190 and a dividend yield of 30.6%. Again, not too bad for either of those. I'm surprised that WiMAX is a little bit smaller than WiMAX, but again, WiMAX has been killing it, so I'm, I'm not 100% surprised. Let's go into our last group, which is the Round Hill Funds, and they have been doing really well. We'll start off with RDTE, which is the newest one on the Russell 2000, and we can see this is the only Round Hill Fund that's negative. It's down 1%, 1.02. Uh, I'm sorry, 1.15%. We're down a dollar and two cents. Now with Roundhill, it hasn't been out that long. So I'm not, I'm, I, this one was supposed to be probably the most speculative, even though Roundhill funds have been performing better. Um, we can see the last couple of dividends was 38, six, um, 24, almost 25 cents, 31 cents. And our last one was 33 and a half cents. Now people were saying initially this one was paying out 30 something cents a dividend. It wouldn't, con it wouldn't continue because it can't keep that up. And then it, that was when it dropped to in the 20s and then it kicked up and now it's paying 30 something cents again. So I don't really know what's going to happen with this one. It seems to do the opposite of what a lot of people say. And maybe people are just not, they're kind of hating on these funds because they don't like the idea behind them. Either way, it paid out well and I'm happy about it. It is still down a percent though. Lower AUM of 70 million and a dividend yield not calculated because it's 3.8%, which isn't possible because they don't have enough history. Um, but still, RDTE, although it's down, the dividends have been good, and I'm really excited to see how this one continues to perform. I would love some price appreciation to come back, but it might not, and I'm okay with that. Our next one is XDTE, probably one of the fan favorites. This one is up 0.38%, which has made us 40 cents in the account, and we can see this one has been trading well. This is a chart that I'm really surprised about because this is like a normal stock chart. It doesn't have decreasing value over a long period of time. You can kind of see what happens when the market swings and whatnot. And I like that. I don't like seeing like the IWMY's chart is hideous. All the Defiance Funds charts are hideous except for the, the most recent little section for some of them. Now, the XTTE seems to be performing like a normal security, which I, again, am happy about. Assets under management, 193 million and a dividend yield of 14.27%. I'm not sure how accurate the yield is on here, but we can just check and see the dividends ourselves. 22.8 cents, 20.2 cents, 21.7 cents, and 23.9 cents. So we've had a really 
great dividend recently. Some of these have been paying really well. I wonder if that has to do with the market fluctuating quite a bit recently. I've been down on the month. I don't know about you guys. Let me know. I have a very weird niche specific profile um, that I have for when I when I invest. And so it's not necessarily just all money market funds and whatnot. So I'm down. Maybe not everybody else is down. Um, so let me know. But still, I'm happy with this one. And now to our king, our ruler, our queen, actually, QDTE, um, is up 1.23%. And we've made a dollar point zero four on our $84 investment, which I'm happy about. And that's not including dividends. Again, this is all just the price appreciation. I hopefully said that in the beginning, or hopefully you understand that's not including dividends. Our dividends are paying into the account. Now, QDTE, a little bit of an uglier chart than XDTE, but still relatively realistic. It's been trading sideways, been paying weekly dividends pretty consistently. 21.7 cents, 26.9 cents, 31.8 cents, and 20.8 cents. So a real big drop in the dividend, the lowest one that we have seen since September 19. Not happy about that, but the price is continuing. The price is up. So it really kind of seems... It's funny because initially everyone was saying that XDTE will pay lower dividends, but you'll get more price appreciation. It's kind of the opposite. XDTE has been paying more dividends and QDTE is a price appreciating at double the rate, more than double the rate actually. But uh, QDTE's price should be more consistent because the assets under management, 507 million, it is huge. No, none of the other ones even come close to it and a dividend yield of 22.36%, which I'm happy with, especially if it, if it continues Ooh, couldn't talk there, especially if it continues to price up uh, by 1% every single week um, or probably every two or three weeks. So again, I'm happy with these results. Let's jump into the dividends. I know you guys are waiting to see what has paid out what, and uh, we'll jump right over to that Excel spreadsheet. We're going to look at two things on the spreadsheet. We'll look at the dividends that have paid out total from each fund and then total to the account. And then I have tracking, you know, the cash balance. So we can kind of see actually what this week's is going to be. We can see that IWMY with three shares of that paid me 92 cents. QQQY, three shares of that paid me 82 cents. WDTE, two cents of that paid me 50 cents. Two shares of that paid me 50 cents. Um, all of these, I mean, they're all a little, some are a little bit down, some are not. I mean, IWMY took a little bit of a hit down about 10% with the dividend compared to the last dividend and the dividend prior to that down even more, which is what's worrying me about this one with Navarosian. The other two are down from the initial dividend, but not too far down from last week's. So I'm not sweating yet. IWMY is making me nervous. QDTE, pretty decent all over the board. Um, we have two shares of that, paid me 42 cents. XDTE even jumped our highest dividend yet from since buying this fund at 48 cents for our two shares. And then RDTE back up to not near all-time high dividend wise, but still higher than the last two weeks, 67 cents per R2 shares. Now, YMAG, we can see that 27 cent drop is crazy, but like I said, they're trying to keep it consistent. And so that is why, at least that's what I'm speculating based off of what the internet has informed me. And then we have YMAX, a really nice dividend so far, um, highest that we've seen at $1.13 for five shares, which is phenomenal. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll actually, we'll auto sum these and it'll give us our dividend amount of $5.21. Um, and we'll re-auto sum this again. And it's gonna give us our total dividends of $16.42, which I think is pretty good. Um, no, that can't be right. It needs to be more than that. So here's what we'll do. We're gonna do equals this, plus this, plus this, plus this. And that's going to give us 21.63 for our dividend. I'm not sure how I did that wrong. $21.63 is phenomenal so far. And that's why our account, even though we're down, um, what, a dollar something, we're up $20 because of these dividends. And so our account balance is up, cash balance is up. I'm excited to see it. Now what I'm going to do, it's going to take me a little bit of time, but I'm going to calculate all the dividends and put them back into the funds and see how the percentage return is with the dividends paid out. I'm getting better and better with Excel and it looks hideous, but let me tell you, I got the information. So starting off, we'll see what the dividend totals have been. So IWMY has paid $3.22. QQQY has paid $2.68. WDTE has paid $1.68. And QDTE, 204. XDTE, 177. RDTE, 
2.55. YMAG has paid $3.63 and YMAX has paid $4.06. So those two are a bit higher than everything else except IWMY, but that one is beaten down the most. So all these numbers are not going to make sense to you. They barely make sense to me. II is initial investment. So when I calculate out the dividends plus the current price value, we get this number, this section right here. So this section is simply our current price minus our initial price, and that is going to give us our values. So total, IWMY has made me $0.50. Cents. Um, QQQY has made me $2.33. WDTE has made me $1.22. QDTE has made me $3.06. Uh, XDTE has made me $2.13. RDTE only $0.89. Cents. Then we have YMAG making us $5.03 and YMAX $4.51. So although YMAG, which again, I said was my favorite from the beginning, um, YMAG is our biggest winner, but this is not including the percentages. So if I want to take it one step further, I could do that and give you the percentage based off of the actual amount invested, but still it's a pretty, it's not close. So I don't think it makes much of a difference. We have seen most return from the yield max funds. Um, you could technically add 15% to QDTE because we only invested $85 and you'd still get a decent amount. Um, it would be a little bit closer. Uh, same thing with XDTE, but still the y the yield max funds have been performing and I hope they continue to perform. I'm going to try to put this into a prettier way of, of showing you guys next time, um, but still. I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you like when I do these full in-depth calculations? They take a bit longer, but I do think it's interesting, but it might be super boring and nerdy to you guys. So let me know. But all in all, the funds have all made me money. They have all made me money. And that is key. I am very, very surprised. 1966, that is our total amount made in the account. And I'm, I'm really happy about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my latest video on YMAX. I will be putting one out on YMAX soon as well. So stay tuned for those. I really appreciate you guys for being here. Thank you for helping me grow this channel and this community. You guys are the best and I'll see you in the next video.